set up to sell we'll go through all the things that's going to happen when you sell your property so the very first step that we will do is we will inform all buyers so we have a database of buyers so all the buyers that can afford your home that is looking for I guess a similar home and looking in that specific area or where you're at we will inform them usually via SMS the ones that are interested will just book an inspection okay second step is we go to market now if we end up going to market what I mean by that is we have a full out campaign so we have the photos videos done we're on realestate.com.au and domain.com.au and we have the sign in front that's what I mean by going to market so when you go to market several things are going to happen number one you may or may not have other agents knocking on your door and if you do just give them our business cards and say hey talk to Henry and his team uh, your letterbox your letterbox will be full of people soliciting you for business now in a way I guess they're trying to make a living you'll have solicitors they send you mail say hey you know I see that your house is on the market obviously you need a solicitor you have moving companies cleaning companies you might have some gardeners um, plus again you probably have other real estate agents as well um, just bear in mind so that's what happens when you go to market and also like I said if anyone knocks on your door or talks to you just say talk to Henry and his team hand out business cards to them or just tell them call the sign or look up the ad online and give Henry and his team a call because it's our job to play poker with the buyers that's why you appoint us to do number three so you're on the market for a couple of weeks now during this time you'll receive feedback so the feedback from buyers you'll hopefully you'll get some price feedback as to where your home lies um, now with regards to price feedback please bear in mind in any market in any property you will get buyers that make very 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 low ball offers don't get offended because you always get cheeky buyers that's the price feedback you also have I guess feedback as to what they like and what they don't like about your property and also with regards to feedback should you go to market we also have a vendor portal which you have access to a username and a password and this vendor portal obviously you can log in and you can see all the feedback from buyers what they like what they don't like every single phone call email SMS and sometimes faxes communication that we've had with the buyers even every single attempt to communicate with the buyer we actually record that so you can see us working hard for you to sell your home to get you the best price number four we have open homes if we have any or uh, and or inspections so at the end of every open home and inspection we will generally text you or we just give you a phone call and say hey this is how it went how many buyers came through um, what are the some buyers like what they don't like just give you some feedback um, that's the open homes and generally with uh, open homes we will be there at least 15 to 20 minutes beforehand and as soon as it finishes we'll pack up lock up everything obviously we'll give you a buzz number five I guess this is probably your favorite part offers so when you've been on the market you'll get hopefully you get offers now sometimes you may just get just a one offer sometimes you may just get multiple offers so how do you know if it's a good offer or not well you know it's a good offer I guess it depends on uh, how many views inspections feedback from buyers now just to get get you to have a better understanding of this how does a buyer come up with an offer now there's actually three factors that determine how a buyer makes an offer the first factor is obviously past sales so they look at that's all for that that's all for that that's all for that therefore your house is worth this much so the past sales so what's sold in the past similar to your property number two is the present sales so what is 
currently on the market. So obviously the properties that were sold in the past, the buyer can't buy that anymore. It's no longer up for sale, but they can buy other properties that we are competing with. And number three is the competition that we create. So the competition we create, what I mean is, which or how many other buyers do they have to compete with to buy your home? So the past sales, we can't control. The present sales, what other people are listed for, what they want to sell for, we can't control. But the only thing that we can control to a certain extent is the competition or the number of buyers bidding for your home. So there you have it, that's the, uh, the offers. One more thing, with the offers, not all offers are the same. Now, the first thing obviously is the price. Obviously that's the most important. Number two, the conditions. Is it subject to finance or building a pets or cooling off period or subject to sale of my home? Number three is obviously the buyer's story. Now I'll go through all these three points. Price, obviously that's self-explanatory. Now conditions, what I mean by that is, say for example, you had an offer of $1 million for your home, and it's subject to finance, so it's subject to 14 days finance, and 14 days building and pass, 30 days settlement. compared to an offer of say 995,000, no conditions. Now, if you want absolute certainty, the difference in five grand, probably a good idea to seriously consider taking this offer of 995 instead of $1 million because they're not subject to finance, they're not subject to cooling off period, they're not subject to building in pairs. There's no conditions. So most people will take this 995 instead of the 1 million because over there, not really sure. Will they get finance? Will they not? Will they have concerns about building a pest? No one really knows. Will they pull out during cooling off period? No one knows. So that's what I mean by conditions. Now the buyer's story. So sometimes when a buyer comes in, they could be 20 years old and we've, done, we've had buyers like this before and they buy a million dollar house. And they're actually borrowed from the bank However, they're only earning $80,000 a year. Now, if you do the simple math, there's no way that on an income of $80,000 a year, the bank's gonna lend. And even if you have 20% deposit, the bank's not gonna lend because you don't earn enough. So however, if a buyer, let's say, say, Henry, look, um, I'm on 80 grand a year. I'm buying this house as a million dollars here in, let's say, for example, Wishart. My parents are actually gonna give me um, some money and also will guarantee the mortgage and the parents are actually extremely well to do then that's okay that at least gives you assurance the seller that the finance is okay that's what I mean by the buy story sometimes also the buy story could be look I'm looking to buying to move in I have a wife I have young kids that's great I've had homeowners go we prefer a family to move in than an investor and it chose a family rather than an investor. Because you being the uh, homeowner, you have every right to choose which offer. It's, uh, it's not the agent's position, it's your choice to choose. Uh, but obviously most people choose the one that pays the highest price, but in some cases, they may not be. That's what I mean by the buy story. So there you go, the offer comprised of the price, conditions, and the buy story. Number six. So, congratulations, we are now under contract. Now. Most of the time, when a person makes a contract, you're subject to a cooling off period. Now, what this cooling off period means is that every buyer in Queensland is entitled to five business days to change their mind. Now, five business days to change their mind, what that means is that they can say, you know what, I decided not to buy, they can pull out. However, if they decide to pull out, they have to pay 0.25% of the contract price. So to give you an example, if the contract price is $1 million, 0.25% is 
is two and a half thousand dollars that they have to pay to you should they use the cooling off period to pull down. Now, number two, also you have the finance clause. So most contracts have a finance clause. So if there's a finance clause in your contract from the buyer, that means that it's usually between 14 to 21 days. So during that time, what happens is the bank may or may not send a valuer. If they do send a valuer, the valuer can take 15 minutes. I've even seen some take up to 45 minutes to look at a house, um, take some photos, do some measurements, and write a report and send it to the bank. Um, the bank generally gets it, if not the same day, the next business day. So that's the finance clause. The bank also reassesses the buyer's ability to repay that loan. So there you have it, that's the finance clause. Um, and also, you also have a building and pest. The building and pest, that's usually seven, 14 days, or however many days that buy and seller agrees to. Now with the building and pest clause, when an inspector comes, it could be a building inspector and a pest inspector, or it could be just one building in pest inspector. With the building and pest inspection, it's usually between one and a half to two hours. It may go a bit more, but generally speaking, that's pretty much the time frame, one and a half to two hours when they inspect the home. So that's under contract. Um, and also, we also have the settlement period. So the settlement period could be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, or a specific date that both the buyer and seller agrees. One last thing, there is a place in the contract called special conditions. Now special conditions could be anything. Sometimes you have a buyer goes, look, I'd like to buy your place, subject to the completion of sale of my place. Or it could be, um, I'm happy to buy your place provided you get a pool, pool safety certificate organized before settlement. So it could be anything like that. So there you have it, when you're under contract, these are the general common conditions that you have. Number seven, so we're unconditional. So with most contracts, you have the, I guess, um, cooling off period. If that's passed, that's tick. You have the finance clause, so obviously the buyer has got satisfactory finance, tick. Uh, building and pass is okay, tick. So we're unconditional, that means we can just put a salt sticker on there. Now, after it's unconditional, the buyer also has a right to have a pre-settlement inspection. So pretty much before settlement, they can come in and have a look that the property is in the same condition as when they bought it. So pretty much, I guess, if there was no leaking roof, now it's just, there's a massive hole in the roof and water keeps coming down. Obviously they can say, hey, you know, I like this to be sorted out because there was no hole in the massive roof and water coming down, or there's a toilet missing, like something, I guess, uh, unforeseen like that. Um, that's a pre settlement inspection. And when it goes unconditional, you also need to provide us with your bank details and your postal address, because more, most of the time, we're trying to get five to 10% deposit from the buyer. So any, any remaining funds, less the agent's commission, will refund to your bank. Make sure you double and triple check your bank details. We certainly do not want to send the money to the wrong person. Also, send us your forwarding address. Now, the reason why it's a forwarding address is um, in case the buyer keeps on getting mail uh, addressed to you, we can collect it and then forward that on to you. So, and also you need to talk to your solicitor about what paperwork you need to sign in preparation for settlement. So there you have it. That's what you need to do when you go unconditional. So our final step is number eight. Um, number eight is settlement. Now, settlement time and date, that's arranged between the lawyers. Now, it's also best to vacate the property the day before. Um, technically, you can vacate it before settlement time. Now just bear in mind, say for example, settlement is this Friday and it's at 2 p.m. Now if that's the time of settlement, that technically means you, the seller, must be out before 2 p.m. because after 2 p.m. you're technically trespassing onto the owner's property, which is the buyer's property. So make sure you're out before then. I strongly advise to try to get out at least at the latest the morning of settlement or at least the day before. So you come back and make sure you double check that everything is in order. 
hand the keys to the agent and yeah um, also with regards to settlement once we need to get confirmation from both the buyer and seller solicitor so from your solicitor and the buyer solicitor saying that settlement has been effected once it has then we can hand the keys to the buyer um, apart from that I think that's about it and also we will give you a call after settlement has been effected.